Hello friends, today we are going to discuss about the upper limb anatomy. Into the upper limb anatomy, we are starting from the chapter number 3 that is the pectoral region and into the pectoral region, we are discussing the topic of breast tissue. It is the most important structure which is present into the pectoral region. It is one of the modified sweat gland and it is present into the both the sexes but into the males it is rudimentary, it is not much developed but into the female it is a very well developed and they are the accessory organs for the reproductive system they are producing the milk and giving a nutrition support to the child so they are the accessory organ of the reproduction now into the anatomy we are starting from its situation where this breast tissue is situated so remember onto the outer side there is a presence of the skin then just beneath the skin there is a present of the superficial fascia and this breast tissue are present between superficial fascia and the deep fascia so remember pectoral is a major muscle which is a surrounded by the deep fascia the name of the fascia clavipectoral fascia and just superficial to this clavipectoral fascia there is the presence of the breast tissue so answer is a it is a present into the superficial fascia now this breast tissue is having one structure which is piercing this deep fascia which is known as the axillary tail of the spines and from the, it is a rounded structure from that round opening this breast tissue some tail like structure is going deep inside and deep inside so breast is into the superficial fascia so going into the deep fascia, it's some part piercing that deep fascia which is forming a round opening and that is known as the axillary tail of the spines and the, the round opening is known as the foramen of a linger. Now breast is having a four quadrants and how these quadrants are divided. So it's simple, you just uh, draw one line, two lines one which is the vertical line and another is the horizontal line then divide it upper two are uh, upper quadrants and uh, these are the two lower quadrants into the upper also medial that is known as the upper medial outside that is known as the upper uh, outer or upper lateral here it is known as the lower lower medial and the outer side uh, lower outer or you can say lower lateral so upper medial, upper lateral, lower medial, lower lateral. Now what is the extent of the breast tissue? So we will learn the extent into the two form. One is known as the vertical extent and another it is known as the horizontal. So from the vertical extent, from where to where it is situated. So from the vertical it is situated from the second rib to the sixth rib. Second to the sixth you can also see here it is situated here from the second rib and from the second rib to the sixth and horizontally this is the sternum part and into the sternum lateral part of the sternum from the lateral border of the sternum to the mid axillary line so here that is anterior axillary here posterior axillary and into the mid axillary from the lateral border of the sternum to the mid axillary second to the sixth now what are the deep relations of this breast tissue so deep relations you must remember it is having a pectoral fascia deep inside pectoralized major muscle is there and deep inside there is a pectoral fascia now what are the important muscles which are situated just deep to this breast tissue so here you can see this is the pectoralis major muscle then important muscle here there is a serratus anterior muscle is over situated let's remove the skin so here there is a presence of the serratus anterior this is the pectoralis major muscle and presence of the external oblique muscle so remember these are three important deep relations of the breast tissue then into the structure of the breast tissue we divide into the skin parenchyma and stroma into the skin we remember two things that is the one is nipple and the another is the areola so what is the nipple that is the conical projection it is the conical projection from the breast tissue and 
it is having the opening of how many ducts then it is a 15 to 20 lactiferous ducts are opening into the nipple and it is surrounded by modified sebaceous glands as well as some of the modified sweat glands also and the nipple is surrounded by a black colored dotted part which is known as the areola and these areola uh, also having a modified uh, sebaceous glands which uh, secrete the uh, liquid uh, you can say oily secretions and these oily secretions uh, help the nipple that it doesn't crack down and uh, during the pregnancy from the year the areola part also enlarged here and forms the tubercle like structures which are known as the Montgomery's tubercle that is known as tuberculosis of the Montgomery fine now into the parenchyma what needs to be remembered that you can compare it by a spoke wheels into the cycle uh, you can say into the center part if there is a bicycle tire is there and into the center part if we take it a slight anteriorly slight anteriorly if we take then the spikes are situated just radially so just like that the lobes 15 to 20 lobes they are situated radially into the breast tissue these all the lobes are converging towards the nipple and when these uh, these lobes having a uh, alveoli you can see here there is a presence of the alveoli it is a uh, different than the lungs alveoli here also there are round structures surrounded by the cuboidal epithelium uh, when the pregnancy is there milk production is high they are into the columnar stage inside and these uh, alveoli produce the milk they secrete into the duct these duct lactiferous uh, duct this lactiferous duct uh, goes towards the nipple and just near to the nipple these lactiferous ducts are dilated they form of a uh, sinus like structure and which is known as the lactiferous sinus and then these lactiferous duct opens into the nipple so these uh, lobules 15 to 20 they all terminates into the nipple now if we see these lobes are there but what is in between these lobes in this between these lobe uh, there is a presence of the stroma and this stroma is uh, also known as the supporting uh, framework of the breast tissue and in this uh, stroma there is a presence of the fibrous uh, septas also there and what these fibrous septas do so here there is a presence of the pectoralis major muscle just anterior to the pectoralis major muscle there is a pectoral fascia clavipectoral fascia is there from this fascia their ligaments are going and uh, reaching towards the skin of the breast tissue these fibrous uh, septas is known as the suspensory ligament of the cooper so these are the fibrous septas which are forming the suspensory ligament of the cooper and they support the breast tissue now let's remember and one thing i just forgot to tell that these deep fascia is there and this breast stroma and parenchyma is there between them there is a one space is there this space is uh, filled up uh, by the loose areolar tissue this is also known as the retro mammary space retro behind the breast there is a space filled up by the loose areolar tissue which is known as the retro mammary space that's why breasts are freely movable onto the uh, deep fascia now that's a